listening. This is Decent English News Edition, and you're watching with me, Ningwe Kim Kongsai. First, the headlines. Total of seven candidates filed nominations for inner and four candidates for outer Manipur parliamentary election. India to spend 3.7 billion to fence Myanmar border, sources say. News in detail. On the final day of nominations filing for the first inner Manipur parliamentary constituency election, six candidates step forward, aiding to the roster of contenders for the upcoming 18 Lok Sabha election. The nominations were submitted today at the office of the returning officer in Lamfelpat, Infal West. With this latest development, a total of seven candidates are slated to vie for the first inner Manipur parliamentary constituency seat in the ensuing 18 Lok Sabha general elections 2024, said India Today Northeast. Leading the list of candidates who filed their nominations today is Maheswar Thaunauzam, representing the Republican Party of India, Athawale RPIA. Joining him is Thaunau Zambasanta Kumar Singh, putting forth his candidacy on behalf of the Bharatiya Zanata Party, BJP. Dr. Angomta Bimo Akoizam steps into the race as the representatives of the Indian National Congress, INC. Additionally, Moirang Them Totom Shana Nong Sabah enters the fray representing the Rastriya Zan Zanhit Singh. Hearst Party, RJSP notably. Haurung Bamsara Singh throw his hat into the ring as an independent candidate. While Nasipam Nilakanta Singh represents the Universal Family Party. It's pertinent to mention that Raskumar Somendro Singh, also known as Gaiku, had previously filed his nomination paper representing the Manipur People's Party, MPP, on Monday. The nomination paper submitted by all candidates will undergo scrutiny tomorrow, the 28th of March, Thursday, commencing at 11 a.m. The scrutiny process will take place at the Office of Returning Officer for the number 1st Inner Manipur Parliamentary Constituency, located at Lamfelpat Info. Candidates who file for the Outer Parliamentary Constituency are Ali Sonabon, my independent, Katui Timothy Zimik, Naga People's Front, Alfred Kangam as author, Indian National Congress, and S. Kuzon, independent. This development signifies a growing roster of candidates and sets the stage for a competitive inner Manipur parliamentary elections, stirring anticipations and interest among constituents as the election season pro progresses. India plans to spend nearly $3.7 billion to fence its 1,610 km, 1,000 mile per border with Myanmar within about a decade. State is sourced with direct knowledge of the matter to prevent smuggling and other illegal activities. As per Reuters, New Delhi said earlier this year it will fence the border and aims at decades all visa free movement policy with COP hit Man Myanmar for border citizens, for reasons of national security and to maintain the demographic structure of its northeastern region. A government committee earlier this month approved the cost for the fencing, which needs to be approved by Prime Minister Narendra Modi's cabinet, said the source, who declined to be named as they were not authorized to talk to the media. The Prime Minister's office and the ministries of Home, Finance, Foreign Affairs and Information and Broadcasting did not immediately respond to an email seeking comment. Myanmar has so far not commented on India's fencing plans. Since a military coup in Myanmar in 2021, thousands of civilians and hundreds of troops have fled from there to Indian states where people on both sides share ethnic and familial ties. This has worried New Delhi because of risk of communal tensions spreading to India. Some members of the Indian government have also blamed the porous border for abetting the tense situations in the restive northeastern Indian state of Manipur. 
about in Myanmar. For nearly a year, Manipur has been engulfed by a civil war like situations between two ethnic groups, one of which shares lineage with Myanmar's Jin tribe. The Committee on Senior Indian Officials also agreed to this to build parallel roads along the fence and 1,700 km, 1,050 miles of feeder roads connecting military bases to the border, the source said. The fence and the adjoining road will cost nearly 1 to 5 million rupees per kilometer, more than double that of the 55 million per kilometer cost for the border fencing with Bangladesh built in 2020. The source said because of the difficult hilly terrain and the use of technology to prevent intrusions and corrosion. It is hereby notified to the general public living in within the territorial jurisdictions of the Kulki Chief Association, KCHR Jampur, that with reference to order number 498, 2020, DC, CCP dated 16 3rd, 2024, and signal number C9, ELEC, SP, CCP, 2024, 2078, dated 18 3rd, 2024 issued by the District Magistrate Chari Jampur and Superintendent of Police Chari Jampur, respectively, in connections with the positions of licensed gun under Section 21 of Arms Act 1959. The Kuki Chief Association, KCA Chari Jampur, took the matter into consideration and perused it. In consonance with the developing law and other situations prevailed in the state of Manipur. It may be reiterated that Vide notifications number 492-2020 DCCCP dated the 14th February 2023 issued by the District Magistrate Church Jampur wherein more than 160 arms license holder had deposited in compliance history above mentioned order. However, the deposited arms have never been released to the license holders hitherto. to. Furthermore, it may be reiterated that incessant attack were witnessed on numerous logistic boundaries in between the Church Jampur to Bisnapur district. In the aftermath of submissions of such arms after duly complied with the order issued by the district magistrate Church Jampur, it is pertinent to note that imposition of Article 355 in the state of Manipur coupled with enforcement of Armed Forces Special Act, AUSPA 1958. The affairs of the state fatal to strive to achieve a welfare state as laid down in Article 38 of the Constitution of India. Simultaneously, on a on different account, the state armory were being looted in the vicinity of Infal, and those perpetrators roamed the street while carrying the looted arms. Thereby, it became evident that the system and state mercenaries failed to recover the looted arms over the past 10 months. Henceforth, in considerations of the above stated facts and circumstances, the Kuki Chief Association, KCHR Jampur, issued this notification to concern authority and armed license holders as a reminder that Armed Forces Special Power Act, AUSPA 1958, has been imposed in the hill areas. SOO ground rules are regularly monitored by Zone Monitoring Group ZMZ, IU, zero candidate to contest the upcoming MPs elections from the district, from the above stated facts. There is no such question of apprehensions of dancer or breach of law and order in the district of Church Jampur during the Model Court of Conduct MCC. No political settlement has been made since the 3rd May 2023. Thereby, we are at the state of vulnerability. Hence, license holders shall not deposit the arms, rather continues their fundamental duties as enshrined in Article 51A under Part 4 a of the Constitution of India, wherein a proviso of moral and civic duty such as to uphold and protect the sovereignty, unity, and integrity of India, defend the country, and render national service when called upon to do so, safeguard public property, and strive towards excellence in all spheres of individual and collective activity to higher levels of endeavors and achievement were made therein.
last but not the least, any coercive act of the state through district administrations to curtail and cause prejudice to the vulnerable community at this peak are shall deem negative or reasonable classifications and infringement of equality before law and equal protections laws and which is by Article 14 of the Constitution of South India. Issued in the interest of safety and security of the Kulki community of the Church Jampur district. Today at around 11 a.m. The Kuki Women Organizations for Human Rights, KWOH, or General Headquarters extended its Zangnadopna Project Awareness Program for the Sing Art Area, KWOH, or Women Organizations at Sumchivum. The program was attended by the women representative of its village in the state area. The Zangnadopna Project was entrusted to KWOHR by the Kuki MP during its General Assembly. KWOH or General Headquarters executives have been giving this awareness program in different blocks in the district, and today they visited the Singat block. According to this Zangang Nadopna project, every household with women should contribute rupees 100 every month, which is to be submitted to KWOH or General Headquarters by the area. KWOA star committee members before 15th of every month. This money donated is to be donated to the permanent village volunteers who had lost their life while fighting the front line. So far, four village volunteers had lost their lives due to various reasons at the front line and in order to comfort their parents from the pain of losing their beloved son who selflessly died for the cause of the people. The KWOSR had decided to donate this collected money to the deceased brave warrior's parent. KWOSR President Ngaini Kim in her speech said that the KWOSR General Headquarters executives will continue to spread this Zangnadopna awareness program to all the cook inhabited areas, even to Zandil, Kangpokpi, and Nagale. She also said that the program will be extended to other cities and countries as well where our people settle. She also salutes the mothers who sacrificed their son to be warrior of war. Manson may be met that 30 village volunteers were sent from the Singat area. They also review various rules and regulations to be followed by the KWOHR Singat area. Two women from East Village were given the responsibility to collect money in their respective village which will be further submitted to the executive members. KWOA Star General Secretary also said that, based on our encounter, none of the four deceased village volunteers belong to a well-to-do family. Their families, instead of thinking their own, they sacrifice their sons to protect us. It is so painful to see their families weeping for their son who died fighting for the nation. The least we can do for them is to give them some amount of monetary aid, which is nothing near comparable to their child's life. But we have to do the least we can for the bewildered family. KWOA's heart will keep a detailed record of this collected money, and we will be very transparent in dealing with this collected money. See aided. Highlight may be made that the Cookie Chief Association of the area also adorned the program and also sponsored lunch for the attendees. Tuni Cookie Women Organization for Human Rights, Singat Block A Cookie Women Organization for Human Rights Day Lam Kainale, Chuting Le Adia Agam Sunga Cookie Chief Association Singat Block Horn. A vice IP in a new even Zang Nadopna project, Tung Zang to a Agakiti in Hostina House Sapile, Hosungalam Kaiho, he in Tingle, a singer block a cheap association Honjong, A Zau Pivin. Program Lord Hing Tainakitai Tin, Kakipa Ma, Maun Agam Sung Mi Lam Kaiho, Zo, Se Tunga, Cookie Women Organization for Human Rights, Minin Kipa to a Kisayin. Sitting the Hitchy program, Lord Hinading I KSO Hon Long Panasata in a lapi or his in Agam Sunga, sing at Blog AKSO Hotunga Jonki Pat, who can say it in Sitting the net let's a hozong refreshment on cheap association on in a pot or pivin. 
নুটে হজ উসে বা চিপ এসোসিয়েশন লেকে এসো হচুঙ আর বেল বেল ইন পাথু কে সে ইন কুকি উইমেন অর্গনাইজেশন ফর হিউমেন রাইটস ইন কুকি ইন পি ইন প্রজেক আনে জং দপ ন প্রজেক হি হিউমেন রাইটস তেন এন সে না এই পি উত কি হিন তু নি চিন স্রুচানপুর ডিস্ট্রিক সুংসে সে আং হিন এরিয়া এরিয়া চিপ এসোসিয়েশন কে বাই পো না সেইডিং ইন তেসং এরিয়া চিপ এসোসিয়েশন আহিন চুটেলে কয়েতেলু এরিয়া আহিন চুটেলে সাই কোট লম আহি ইন তেলে তুই লা আহি ইন হি তিচু আহুম কি চে ইন তু নি হিন সিঘাট ব্লক আহি কি বোল আহি ইন চুরচানপুর সুহা হি আহ্লাং পি খাট হি কিজ তবং ইন আহম তা ইন মি পি জন জং আহে থিম তাং কতন চুটেলে আদে ইন তু নি ইন জং সিঘাট ব্লক সুহা নুটে হজ সেন জং তপকং ফুঙ পাতনা ইসু পিটেও গাল সাদ থে হো গাল থে দিদিন মুনা আউম তু কি পাথু জং আফং উবিন ইজে চুন আমহন জং পান আহিন লাজিং দিউ কিনে বউম চুটেলে মবা না জং হি নাগালেন আহিন আসাম আহিন চুটেলে In today's hearing before the Delhi High Court, UPSC submitted that only those candidates from Lamka and Kangpukpi who opted for info as an examination center will be allowed to change their center. In addition, the state of Manipur submitted that they, can, they can't provide transport because candidates traveling in a large group by bus or other means is security risk, and the Manipur government cannot guarantee security. Instead, they will provide rupees 1,000 per day for boarding and lodging expenditure for three days. And reimbursement for travel costs with the ceiling of state-notified bus rates. Our legal team led by advisor Nizam Pasa strongly objected to vote on the following rounds. First, if the Manipur government cannot arrange transport on the premise that they can't guarantee security. How can candidates who are private citizens be left to travel on their own without any assurance of safety? Is this not a complete abdication of responsibility to ensure security and law and order by the government of Manipur? Second, given the geographical divisions in Manipur and the population transfer along ethnic lines, no one from Churichampur and Kangpokpi would have opted for info as a center in the first place. For, you, for UPSC to allow only those candidates who chose for info as an examination center will be given the option to change their center. Practically means no or zero relief for tribal candidates. Third, while the original prayer was to establish UPSC examination centers in Lamka and Kangpokpi to limit the relief of providing the options to change centers only to candidates in Lamka and Kangpokpi is highly unfair. There are candidates from the our communities in the other hill districts like Parzol, Dinopal, and Church and Chandil, and they are likely to lose out if this is not corrected. Fourth, in any event, the amount sanctioned by the Manipur government is too meager and ignores the present day realities or cost of traveling from Manipur to other states. Despite our repeated efforts to get the Honorable Delhi High Court to ask difficult questions from Manipur government, for the completely self-contradictory submissions. That the Lee High Court was reluctant to second guess the submissions made by government of Manipur on the security, security concerns expressed by them. The High Court accepted the submissions of UPSC and government of Manipur and passed an order. All of the above being said, we request our UPSC CSE experience to continue to preserve in the light of this circumstances. We are awaiting the text of the final order. We will study it and are actively exploring all available legal remedies. All legal options remain open. Today at around 11 a.m., SBI's handing of school bus to CCI program was conducted at Malsom Ability Research Center, Person Moon. Pausagin Tonsing, Director CCI, welcomed the distinct guests and also brief about the Center for Community Institute, CCI, to the attendees. CCI was established in the year 2008, especially for the grassroots level students of the society, 
and we are also given special training so that they can start supporting themselves when they reach the age of 18. Till today, 300 children, 4,500 grown-ups, 24 staff, and a sum of rupees three crore have been involved in this institute and its management. A future project to establish higher secondary education level education system for the students of Malsom Institute and also to set up proper training center as well as hostel facilities were also planned. Amit Kumar, Deputy General Manager, Administrative Office, Silong, in his speech said that his donations of a school bus for the downtrodden students were bought from the saving up of little profits from the Bank of Corporate Social Responsibility, CSR, Juba Charambal, General Manager. Network 1-1. LHO Guwahati in his speech gives his respect to the CCI members who work to uplift the lives of the downtrodden students. He further says that the aim of SBI is to make available access to banking system to both the rural and urban citizens in the country. In the, in the future, SBI will continue to support and provide helping hands when needed, he aided. Come into being in 2002, but it was restructured in 2007 to deal on disability. And Center for, in a broad sense, Center for Community Initiative, disability is our core program. We have livelihood and sustainable program. When the children are growing up and crossing 18 years old, we have, they have to involve in the livelihood as well as with the parents. From that on, we start on working with the farmers. Then advocacy and community empowerment, where that is our strong area, I should say, till today. As an example, two individuals were reportedly killed by unknown miscreants at Itzamati under the jurisdictions of Sela police stations in East Kasi Hills district on Wednesday evening. The incident occurred post an anti citizenship amendment act, CAA rally conducted by the Kasi Students Union, KSU, and other NGOs at Ichamati, according to police sources. The victims, belonging to non-indigenous communities, may have been targeted by criminals exploiting the situation. The incident occurred post an Anti-Citizenship Amendment Act CAA rally conducted by the Kasi Students Union KSU, and other NGOs at Ichamati, according to police sources. The victims, belonging to non-indigenous communities, may have been targeted by criminals exploiting the situation. Deputy Commissioner of East Kasi Hills, S.C. Sadu, confirmed the deaths, stating that further details are pending. The situation remains tense, with additional forces being dispatched. Superintendents of police have been ordered to enhance patrolling and organize peace meetings the following days. The deceased identified as L. Ishan Singh and L. Suzy Dutta were discovered at Itamati and Delta respectively, informed District Police Chief Rituras Ravi. Post mortem and increased procedures are yet to be conducted by teams from the local police stations and additional teams from Sila. More details will be provided later. Manipur police have apprehended four members of the Ben KCP Noyan group in Imphal West District on March 27. The individuals identified as Wahang Bam Matoy Singh, 32 years, Suren Sang Bam Mungja Singh, 47, Tongam Zoidanda Singh, Boy Cha, 49, and AK Sanzo Hirozi, 34, were reportedly involved in extorting money from the public. Authorities seized a 9mm pistol loaded with 10 life rounds, 2 hand grenades, 3 7.62mm life ammunition, an empty INSAS rifle magazine, a car, and 3 mobile phones from the possessions. A case has been resisted and an investigation is underway. Manipur police arrested four persons on March 27 following seizures of huge catch of arms, ammunition, and explosives in Bishnupur district. 
As per India Today Northeast, the four arrested persons have been identified as Salam Rameswar Singh, Thong Bram Gyanzit Singh, Bukrami Ngocha Singh, and Thoksom Temba. Alongside DRS, authorities seized a significant catch of items, including three SLR rifles, along with four empty magazines. Additionally, they confiscated 20 life rounds, seven mobile phones, one Baofeng walkie talkie set, and two cars, along with bags and various other items. The authorities have initiated a formal case to delve deeper into the matter, marking the commencement of further investigations by the Manipur police into the circumstances surrounding the arrest and the seized items. The Delhi High Court on Wednesday refused to grant any relief to Chief Minister Arvind Kestriva, who had filed a plea against his arrest by the Enforcement Directorate ED in connection with the excise policy case. The court granted ED seven days to respond and filed April 3rd as the next day for hearing. Kestriva, in his plea before the Delhi High Court had arrested, that the ED's actions violated his fundamental rights. The Arm at Me Party, AAP chief, has contended in his plea that the ED has not been able to prove his guilt. The DOE has, at the time of arrest, has failed to establish that petitioner is guilty of committing activities stipulated under Section 3, that is, be it want of concealment, possession, accusation, use of process of crime, as much as presenting it as untainted property or claiming it to be so. Kestrival's legal team pleaded. Kestrival has further criticized his arrest without being questioned, suggesting a premeditated and political motive behind the proceedings. Earlier today, Kestrival's wife Sunita in a video message says that her husband would do a big expose on the LA's excise policy scheme in court on March 28 and also present evidence. She said that when she met the deadly CM in the ED custody, Kestrival told her that the central agency has conducted more than 250 raids in connections with the so-called liquor scam in the last two years, but not a single paisa has been found in any of the raids so far. The ED arrested Kestrival on March 21st in connections with the Delhi excise policy case link to a money laundering case and remanded the next day to the ED till March 28. The case pertains to LA's irregularities and money laundering in framing and implementing the Delhi Excise Policy Case 2022, which was later scrapped. Former Deputy Chief Minister Sisodia and AAP's Raja Sabha MP Singh were arrested last year in relation to the Excise Policy Case, while Parfum Minister Zain was arrested in a case related to money laundering. That's all from us tonight and we thank you for joining our program.